AI trades very similar to marijuana. Like even NVIDIA, when they were breaking out, the other AI stocks were gapping up five, 10 percent. By the end of the first day of NVIDIA's big earnings spike, the other AI stocks were red on the day. I don't know how many people have actually acknowledged this publicly, but you're the reason why most of us are sitting here in this room right now. Your ability to market, your ability to attract people into day trading, into the stock market is the reason why I'm sitting here right now, is the reason why I can't speak for others, but that's the reason why I'm sitting here. Had I never seen a Tim Sykes ad, I would, I would never be sitting here right now. So how did you get into it? And then how, what was it that clicked that all of a sudden you went, whoa, this could be so much more than what I just did. I mean, I'm Jewish Forrest Gump. Like things just happen to me. And I'm, 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 I'm not a smart man, but I know what trading is. Um, it's it's crazy. Like I, 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 you know, there's a case that can be made that this is all like a simulation because things just work out for me, even with my losses. And like my losses help me learn what not to do. Um, you know, getting in a fight with Randall Lane. Uh, who was this this big time magazine editor of Trader Monthly. And then he like just ripped my name through all of his press friends. Like when I first got started teaching the, the Reuters article after I talked to her for four hours and thought that she understood my story. And the article title is failed hedge fund manager tries again on the internet. And I'm like, ah! um, <laughs> the ups and the downs, like it's, it's crazy, but I appreciate the downs um, and you learn from them. But I, I got started trading senior year of high school. I had surgery on my arm. I had Tommy John surgery. I was a tennis player, couldn't play tennis anymore. I had surgery. They take something out of your other arm. They put it in this arm. I'm walking around with two casts. I look like freaking RoboCop. And yeah, I can't do much, but this was 1999. The stock market was going crazy. You could have been a moron and put your money in anything and made a lot. And I made roughly a hundred grand senior year of high school, which was a lot. I'm from a small town in Connecticut. Um, freshman year in college, the first four months is when the NASDAQ went from 2000 to 5,000. I grew the hundred thousand into nearly a million freshman year. And I, you know, I have three fake IDs taken away from me. I can't even drink beer. Like I, I'm a downloading illegal movies from Merck in my freshman dorm room. Like I didn't deserve to make nearly a million dollars. Like what's going on? And you'll laugh. My number one strategy at the time, companies just added dot com to their name. And they would spike for three, four, five days in a row. Sportsman's Guide opened my eyes. They sell camping gear. I think they're still around. I put out a press release. Sportsman's Guide is now sportsmansguide.com. We're going to sell camping gear online. Three to 12 in a week. Not even all at once. And I'm like, are you in the over and over again? Like there was probably 500 different companies that added dot com. Every single one of them, double, triple, quadrupled. Um, Market Watch was was an IPO before CBS bought them. That was like up fifty thousand percent. Like it's it was stupid, but I was in the right place at the right time. A lot of people made a lot of money in ninety nine and two thousand, but I learned short selling in two thousand one, two thousand two because I realized that there were so many pump and dumps, and then I gravitated towards that. Not many people adapted. No, most people don't, never adapt. They find one hot strategy and then they think that's it. Hodlers, for example. <laughs> <laughs> so when the okay. when that stuff was going wild, how are you submitting orders? Are you are you using a gateway PC? I mean, this was old school. I was using CompuServe and AOL dial up modems. Um, I, I remember there was a, the Y two K thing was going on, and I remember I went in. I had made like my first. I, I think it was like maybe I made like fifty thousand. So I took my parents into New York to see a Broadway show. They had never seen a Broadway show. We didn't grow up with a lot of money. So it was a big thing, and there was a Y2K stock. I want to say it was like GR8, like great. Um, something corny like that. And everyone was afraid. Y2K, like all the computers were shut down. These Y2K stocks were surging. And I, I think I sold some before the Broadway show just in case. But I came back, and it had gone from like 50 to like 118 in a day. And I was like pissed that I had sold some. And I was like, what? No, accelerate. 
Acceler eight with the eight at the end. Um, uh, it wasn't good. Sorry. And this, I mean, this was 20 plus years ago. Forgive me. But like, well, you're, you're doing pretty good for two decades. It comes back. Now, if you look at like a lot of companies say we're getting into crypto or we're, we're working with chat GPT, we're getting into AI. It's the same thing. A lot of companies were getting into the marijuana business. You see these kind of hype cycles. If you compare Ebola stocks versus COVID stocks, it's very similar. COVID just actually went, you know, more than Ebola. Ebola never really took off. I blame myself for not taking advantage of monkeypox. I was like, monkeypox is such a joke. Those stocks spiked again. And I should have realized that the joke could have been profitable. Did you guys bank on the monkeypox stocks? No, I missed that one. Which, which sector do you think is making the most headway right now? You know, do you think AI has the ability to be that sector that stays around? You know, you have crypto you have marijuana you had ebola you had the police scanners where it was hmny and dk or whatever it was dgly, DGLY. yeah DGLY. and all of those and then the shippings and everything else but do you think ai is that sector that much like dot com it's here to stay not all industries trade well um marijuana stocks for example big boom but when they were crashing they didn't bounce i you know i i remember mmnff the craziest ticker and it just dropped and it kept dropping this was you know jack kellogg and kyle williams biggest loss th those days because they dip bought and it, it just kept dropping they sized in they each lost six figures i take very small trades I made like two grand and I was like, trade like a sniper, trade like a coward. And they're like, shut up. And they were making millions like on the month anyways. Um, you can trade as conservative or as aggressive as you want, but like AI trades very similar to marijuana. Like even Nvidia, when they were breaking out, the other AI stocks were gapping up five, 10%. By the end of the first day of Nvidia's big earnings spike, the other AI stocks were red on the day. It was very strange. So. Um, and now, you know, NVIDIA keeps going. And, and I know some people say like it's accounting tricks. Some people say it's just the beginning of the AI revolution. There's AAOI, which keeps going. I was buying that in the sixes and selling it in the sevens. And I was like, yeah, now it's like, you know, double. Um, you like, crushed it. it. Uh, ah, fuck. Yeah, exactly. I mean, I was happy just to, to win. Like, to, I'm happy that there's like a hot sector. 2022, there wasn't really much. It was just like survival of the fittest. It was like the Hunger Games. Um, now it's just like, now AI is at least pushing stuff forward, but it's not, it's not as easy as crypto. Um, you know, it, it, there's, there's some nuances. So I, I wouldn't be too aggressive right now. September and October are going to be very volatile. It would be cool if we come back to the year high. Like I wouldn't want to be a short seller. Like I know a lot of short sellers, like their hearts are failing. They're going for weekly medical checkups. I have some short selling students. You know, they have like gray hair, like literally students who are literally the same age as me and they look like fucking Gandalf. And it's not like a prequel Gandalf. It's like, <laughs> you shall not pass. And I'm like, they're the same age as me, dude. So I wouldn't, I wouldn't be as short right now, but at the same time, like, I don't know if we're going to break out to new highs again. I just take it one trade, one fad at a time. Um, I'm just happy to be green. You know, I was green in 2022. I'm, I'm green in 2023. I donate all my trading profits to charity these days. I trade like a little bitch. And I think that is good to trade like a little bitch, especially if you're new. Like this is not the time to be aggressive. In 2020, 2021, I could not trade enough. I looked down at my fingers one time during the mania. And I was like, I don't have enough fingers to do all the trades that I want to do. And I was like cracking up. I would like wake up at two, three in the morning. I watched Tim Gratani's DVD trading tickers and he has so much patience and I had nightmares. And I, I was like stuck in this position and I was like, it was like a short selling nightmare. And I was trying to have patience. I was trying to be like Tim Gratani. I don't even short sell anymore. My life has gotten much less stressful since that change. But I woke up at two in the morning and like, I was conflicted because Tim Gratani says, have patience, but I was getting squeezed. And I was like, ah, and I woke up in a cold sweat. And I was like, oh, oh I don't short sell anymore. Thank God. Oh, okay. <laughs> it's just a nightmare. It's a bad dream. <laughs> You just got to, you got to take the volatility. You got to adapt. If you want to trade small, if you want to donate, do it. You know, if you want to trade big and you, you want to be aggressive, I don't think that this is the right time.